get through. All right, welcome to our webinar, Matching Grants for Giving Tuesday 2024. Uh, my name is Lisa Galfrin. I'm the Marketing Com Communications Manager here at Mighty Calls. Uh, so before we jump into matching grants, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, if you have a question throughout this webinar, please feel free to utilize the Q&A tool on your uh, Zoom dashboard. Um, it's the easiest way for me to find questions that come up uh, throughout the webinar. I'll try my best to pause and ask um, questions. Um, if there's in the chat, I'll also try to go through, but the Q&A is the easiest way for me to um, see all the questions that are coming in. As well, this webinar is being recorded, so we will send out a uh, a copy of this webinar and the slide deck to your uh, email address after the webinar. Um, so that will be sent out sometime tomorrow. All right, so just a little bit of information about Mighty Cause. For those of you, this is your first webinar with Mighty Cause, um, you're brand new to Mighty Cause, just a little bit of context about us. Uh, so we've been in the nonprofit space for quite a long time, since 2006. We used to be a named Razu. Um, so uh, we're one of the biggest technology providers in the giving based space. So in addition to hosting our own Giving Tuesday event, we provide technology for giving events such as Colorado Gives, Give Minnesota, uh, and the list goes on. Um, so we are a platform built for nonprofits to fundraise and for you guys to make impact in your communities. Um, so, you know, we've built in tools uh, and features that help provide you to do that. Um, so some of those are peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, donation processing, checkout flow, customization, um, data collection, et cetera. And so we'll talk about some of these throughout the webinar. They'll naturally kind of come through when we're talking about matching grants, but those are some of the features that we offer. So as I mentioned, we do have our own Giving Tuesday event. Um, so we host a Giving Tuesday event every year. Um, Giving Tuesday this year is on December 3rd. Um, registration is currently open for our event. It is completely free to register. There is no cost to register. Um, you can register and then you'll have access to a lot of the tools and features that have listed um, on the previous page. Our early giving, so when um, organizations can start receiving donations and have it count towards um, any prizes that we'll have available um, that will start November 19th. Um, by registering for our event, you'll have access to uh, a lot of uh, templates and um, uh, uh, a toolkit uh, and a resource center where we provide all of our Giving Tuesday resources. Um, as well, we do offer prizes every year. We haven't announced those yet. We'll be announcing them um, sometime this month. Um, so if you are registered, you'll also uh, be eligible for those prizes. So just a quick graphic as to where you can register. You can go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and you can submit the form, which takes two seconds. And then the second step is um, on your organization profile, Mighty Cause. You just have to complete your to-do list, which is really just adding a, a background image and a logo, just basic uh, to really couple of steps um, to get you uh, set up and ready. Um, one thing I should add as well, if you are participating with one hour of our uh, giving days that uses Mighty Causes technology, like Colorado Gives, like Georgia Gives, um, you don't have to register for Giving Tuesday. Day event, you can just participate in those Giving Tuesday events um, that utilize Mighty Causes tool. All right, and lastly, um, so one of the things that we also have available on our platform is uh, our Accelerate plan. So if you are looking for um, features to kind of take your campaign to the next level, you integrations, um, a supporters CRM system, um, text to give, etc. Uh, that is also available if you want to um, have those features available to you. All right. So now that we're going that out of the way, let's jump into what we're going to be discussing today, which is matching grants. So for the agenda today, we're going to be talking about matching grants basics. What exactly are matching grants? How do they work? Some matching grants strategies, um, you know, how you can implement matching grants 
how to secure a match, um, who to reach out to, how do you create a match, and how to promote your match. And then, of course, um, I'll have dedicated time at the end for questions, but feel free to ask questions throughout this webinar. Let's get started. So what exactly is a matching grant? Um, so a matching grant is essentially a fundraising strategy. It is a fundraising strategy where you are using a donation as an incentive to give. Um, it's when your nonprofit secures a large donation, um, and that can be different sums. For some nonprofits, that's $50,000. For others, that's $1,000. Um, it's when you're able to secure a large donation, and that donation serves as a match for incoming donations. Um, and those are typically provided by a donor before your campaign or before your event. So as I mentioned, it is a fundraising strategy, but it's also a marketing tool. It is a way for you to communicate to your donors why they need to give and why they should give now. Um, it's a way to motivate your donors for them to give immediately. Um, and it's also an opportunity for those donors to double their impact and have their donations go further. So we'll talk about this a little later when we're talking about creating your match, but there's a lot of different types of matches. And we'll also talk about um, based off your strategy or your goals, what type of match you wanna implement. But the different types of matches there are, there's a one-to-one -one match, which is most common, and that's really dollar for dollar. Um, a percentage match, so um, maybe it's not 100%, uh, not dollar for dollar, but it's, it's, it's 200%. So if someone gives $5, that donation is matched 200%, so it's a $15 gift. Um, there's also cumulative threshold matches. So um, for you to receive the match, you have to meet a certain goal. So that could be you have to have 30 donors or 100 donations. So why is utilizing a matching grant specifically for Giving Tuesday so critical or so effective? So matching grants are very commonly used for Giving Days as a strategy to meet your fundraising goals. 84% of donors uh, have said that they're more likely to donate if a match is offered. And um, according to Double the Donation, one in three supporters have stated that they would increase the size of their donation if they knew that it would be matched. And so if we circle back to Giving Tuesday um, and the month of December, because Giving Tuesday is on December 3rd, those that day and that month, those are the biggest fundraising periods for nonprofits on the calendar. Um, so according to MNR Benchmark this past year in their 2024 report, um, they've stated that December giving made up 26% of all online revenue and 34% of one-time online revenue. So this makes, again, December such a critical fundraising period for nonprofits. So you want to make sure that you have all the tools in your arsenal to make it successful for your nonprofit, and matching grants is one of those. Again, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but just to hit home again, the, the effectiveness of matching grants, it serves as a buy one, get one free deal for nonprofits, right? If I make, if it's a one-to-one -one, dollar for dollar match, if I make a $10 gift, I know that's essentially making a $20 gift with my match. And I'm more incentivized to not only give, but to give more. And that also goes to, feeling that I am making a larger impact. I know that my donation is going to make whatever your organization does, whether that's purchase backpacks for students in need or saves rescue animals, is that's going even further. Um, it's also a great stewardship opportunity um, in terms of for a grantor when you are looking for grantors, and we'll talk about that a little later. It's a different ask that you are asking a, a grantor or a donor. Um, and it's also when you talk about giving days, uh, such as Giving Tuesday and our Giving a Tuesday event or any other Giving Tuesday event that you participate in, there's a prize such as a power hour or um, most dollars raised, most donors raised, et cetera. It's a great way to leverage um, a matching grant to help compete uh, for those challenges. 
So when we talk about matching grants and donor engagement, as I mentioned, when it comes to donors, it's a great donor engagement tool um, because it is a way, as I mentioned, for donors to maximize their impact. And for a grantor, it's also a way for them to maximize their impact, right? If you have a major donor that makes a $1,000 check every year to your organization, let's say, um, if they are offered the opportunity of becoming a grantor, right, they know that their donation is actually going to go much further because if they're matching $1,000 in gifts, you're really bringing in $2,000 for the organization. So again, helping create that impact for your nonprofit. So in terms of sponsorships, because that's another, uh, in, that's another type or individual that can give a, a grant for your organization, it's an opportunity to create new relationships. So it's a great icebreaker. It's a way to reach out to prospective sponsors. Maybe that's something that you haven't done before, you've been interested in. It's a great way to reach out to your local community and create that engagement and sense of community. It's also an opportunity for sponsors to be recognized in their community. A lot of organizations are looking for ways to kind of grow their philanthropy and uh, their film philanthropic initiatives. Um, so it's a way for them to build that into their reputation. And also you can um, provide resources in terms of, you know, sharing their logos uh, and their um, name in your communication, et cetera. Um, and yes, as I mentioned, it's also a way for um, your community to get engaged and also for a way, you know, cross promotion and partnership with local community and organizations. So in terms of matching grants and giving to sale, where it comes into play, as I mentioned, is winning prizes. Um, our giving to sale, as I mentioned, we haven't ha um, announced our prizes yet. But every year we'll have um, different types of prizes and um, some that maintain, some that reference leaderboards or hourly prizes. And so that's a great strategy to win those prizes by setting, for example, a matching grant during a power hour where from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, the most donors uh, that a nonprofit receives, receives a prize. And that's a really great strategy to utilize. Um, or a day like Giving Tuesday or a time period like Giving Tuesday, really, because, you know, it's kind of the first two weeks or, or you know, the month of December and the week before, two weeks before Giving Tuesday, it really adds a sense of urgency, right? It's telling donors, you have to donate now if you want your donation to be matched, right? There's not an opportunity for them to wait, think about it, hold off. Maybe I'll think about it later, I'll handle it later. No, make a donation now because right now your donation is going to be matched. Um, all right, so I think we'll jump into matching grant strategies. So there are a lot of different ways you can utilize matching grants when it comes to um, for your Giving Tuesday campaign or any campaign really. So if you've attended one of my webinars before, I always talk about this. And I think when it comes to any fundraising strategy, it is always essential to think about your goals because what your goals are will determine how you want to go about your matching grant and what exactly you want to do. Because what you'll see is there's a lot of different ways you can set up a match. There's a lot of different ways you can promote it. Um, so what are your goals for your Giving Tuesday campaign? Um, and they can be very different goals. For some, it's going to be, right, we're just trying to raise a certain amount of money. Or maybe for others is we have a program that we need to cover the cost for. Um, we want to increase the amount of recurring donors, et cetera. So think about what are your overall giving to the goals? And then how does that come into your grant? What are the goals for your grant? Is it to as I mentioned, you want to win a certain prize and you or you want do more donors um, at the end of Giving Tuesday night because you always you get donations in the morning, but you really kind of fiddles away at towards the end of the night and maybe you want to increase donations at the end of the night. Um, what is going to be the most meaningful impact for your nonprofit? And I think it's really important to think about that. And so here are also a couple of different examples to think about. You want to increase the total amount given or increase the amount of givers you have. 
increase your average donation size, uh, repeat donors, you want to target a specific audience. Maybe you want to target major donors. You want major donors to, you want donors, you want donors to increase their donation size, um, increase the visibility of a funder, right? You want to focus on those partnerships um, that you're building with a matching grant. So we'll talk about a little bit what, depending on what strategy you want to do, what could be the type of match that would be most beneficial for you? So for example, let's say donor acquisition. Um, obviously one-to-one dollar for dollar matches are typically the most popular um, and the most used. However, um, maybe you want to think about a match that's fueled by unique donors, right? So if you're trying to get more donors for your campaign, maybe you have a match where you receive it if you receive a total amount of unique donors. So you need 30 donors in order to receive this match, right? So that mobilizes your supporters, your board members to reach out to their social networks um, for you to you know, use that communication um, throughout your campaign um, so that you say, hey, we need two more donors for us to receive our $1,000 match. You know, help us. We need three more donors to um, see our match by the end of the night. So I see that someone's saying my sound is a bit fading. Let me know um, if it's still an issue uh, moving forward. All right. So let's say your uh, goal is donor engagement. You really want your donors to be more engaged with your organization. Um, you can create a match that's based off total number of donors, right? It's, again, not a one-to-one -one match, but it's based off, you have to receive 100 donations uh, in order to uh, receive your goal. Okay, I, see, I still see it's multiple. So let me take off these headphones. Works better. Let me know, does that work better? Someone can add to the chat and let me know. Okay. All right, great. Okay, awesome. All right, so um, yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, for donor engagement, uh, having a type of match where you have to receive total amount of donations, right? So that can encourage donors to maybe give more than once, right? Maybe instead of, you know, a donor giving just once $10, they're willing to give that twice or even more so uh, throughout your matching grant because, again, you just need 10 more donations. You just need five more donations to reach that $1,000. Um, so, again, something to think about, and that's why it's really helpful to think about what your goals are because that can really affect the type of match you want to do and, again, how you how how you want to communicate that. So also something I've as well mentioned is um, one strategy is also starting your Giving Tuesday campaign with a match. It's a really great way to kick off your campaign, right? This is our Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, we're starting it off with a match, you know, start supporting our campaign. Um, it's a great way to build momentum, get people excited about your campaign um, and start, you know, your fundraising on a, a good note. Um, and so same thing in terms of on the opposite end, it's also a great tool for um, the end of the day, your final hours, like your push across the finish line. It's a great way to incentivize or motivate people to keep giving. Let's say you're um, maybe you haven't reached your goal. It's a really great opportunity. If you have like a stretch goal or a goal you think that's a little bit harder to reach, then having a match at the end might be really helpful um, and help motivate people of um, helping you reach your goal and meeting that match. Um, and if you've already met your goal for that day, again, it's a great way to have a larger goal in mind and say, you know, with this funds, we can even, you know, purchase more backpacks. We can make an even bigger impact this year. So another, uh, another way that organizations um, that we've seen a lot utilize matching grants is if you're fortunate enough to receive more than one grant, um, organizations will use multiple matching grants. Um, so there are a couple of different ways that you can do that. So one could be uh, that 
you have different matches throughout the day. Uh, so it could be one in the morning and one in the afternoon or one at night um, spread out to when you think it would be most effective for your organization, you know, um, or you can have matches to be queued one after the other. So when one match finishes, the next one starts. Um, so there's no right or wrong here, um, but those are two different ways that you can kind of go about um, with your match. So another strategy in terms of board uh, matching grants is having a board challenge. This is actually a really popular peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising campaign, but also matching grant campaign um, is board members providing um, a, a match for your uh, giving event or uh, giving Tuesday campaign. So you can ask your board members to pool together funds for a matching grant. Um, they can utilize this as you see in the screenshot for a peer-to-peer -peer campaign that they're running. So if you have a board challenge, um, if they wanna pool funds together so that they incentivize more giving, um, this is a great way, again, for your board members to also get involved in your Giving Tuesday campaign. And maybe they're not interested in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, maybe this is another, again, great avenue for them to share their support for your organization, really help make an impact, but in a different way. All right. And lastly, um, a corporate match, obviously, is uh, another type of matching grant strategy to utilize. Um, so... As I mentioned before, this is the opportunity um, for you to share the company's logo, share their information on your communication. So there's definitely an incentive for them. They're sharing, you know, the philanthropic initiatives that they're doing. They're sharing the impact they're making in their own community. Um, and as well, you can make this a fun collaboration. You could do a social media takeover where, you know, you post on each other's social media posts. You can create collab postings on Instagram and Facebook. So this is a way, again, for both you and a local um, company or corporation to, you know, uh, gain from um, this experience. Um, all right. Just a couple questions that I see that have popped up in the chat and in the Q&A. So I'm going to pause here. All right. Uh, so there was a question before about uh, Giving Tuesday registration form. So if you go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com, you'll be able to find the form there um, that you can fill out. Um, how do you know if you've completed the org page and thank you page? Um, so on every organization page on Mighty Cause, uh, you'll have a to-do list in your upper left corner. Um, and if you complete that task, it will be checked off. Um, that also um, to-do list will hyperlink to each section. So you can just click there to know where to go to make those edits. But yeah, if you've completed those tasks, um, it will be clicked off. Um are we matching for our own organizations or for other organizations cited on Giving Tuesday? So you are creating matches for your own organization, um, not for any other organization on for Giving Tuesday. What if you don't meet the match? Does the big donor still give the larger amount? That is a good question. We'll talk about this a little later, but that's really dependent on the what what you and your grant have agreed upon. I will say a lot of the time, I would say most of the time, typically the major donor is going to fulfill the entire match, even if you don't meet it. Um, but that is a kind of a conversation to have with your grantor in that, you know, again, being in the being in communication on the same page um, in terms of that. But most of the time I've seen major grantors, they will still fulfill the entire amount, even if you don't meet the entire amount. Um, our organization has several different designations. For a matching grant, do the funds post to the specific designation that the original donation was under, or can the match specify a different designation or the general fund? Um, so that's a good question. So in terms of the Mighty Cause platform, I would say if you have a match that is only for a specific designation or program, I would recommend creating a dedicated fundraising page 
that is for that designation. Um, and you can add a match specifically there. Um, so with our fundraising pages on the platform, you can add matches specifically to those and it will not affect donations that come through, let's say on your organization page. So in terms of your communication, um, you would send out communication linking to that fundraising page and say, hey, if you want to support, you know, I'm going to say our meals program, make a donation here. Donations here will be matched, you know, one to one. Um, can we talk more about the teams? Yeah. So let me just go a couple of slides. Let me just go back to this slide. Um, so teams is essentially group fundraising. Um, so it allows multiple individuals to come together to fundraise as a collective while also having their own fundraising page. Um, so as you see here on the team page, um, you have the dedicated team. So the board member challenge. But also in the leaderboards, you'll see the individual board members. And if you were to click on one of those board members, it would take them to their page. And their page is what they can send to friends and family um, that will support them. Um, and you'll see the collective total here. Um, if it's a challenge grant, then, uh, then they would not fund if the matching amount is not reached. Um, Again, it depends on the, the grant you have. So I'm not saying that some may not do that, but um, in a lot of cases I've seen with major donors, they do end up. But again, that's kind of uh, up to a conversation with your grantor. Um, so one problem with the donor completing the match, no matter what, mean, what that means, is that the funds donated or, or donate on the assumption that the match is contingent on their donation is not entirely true. Um, so it depends on how you set up your match. So there are two matches. So one is a one-to-one -one match, dollar for dollar. So you're not saying that your donations are, the match is contingent on you receiving $1,000 donations. You're just saying, in we have a $1,000 match, if you donate in this time period, right, your $5 is going to make a $10 impact. But you're not saying that you aren't going to receive that regardless. There is a different type of match, a cumulative threshold match that does say that, that says we need to reach $1,000 in order for us to even get the match. Um, so again, this is really a fundraising and marketing tool to communicate to donors. Huh? All right. Um, so another question of recommended places to find these grants. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to jump into right now. So securing a matching grant. So who provides a matching grant? Really, it can be anyone. And we'll specifically talk, um, we're not going to be talking about like grant programs, but really in terms of like for a Giving Tuesday campaign, who could provide one? So one, your board members or trustees, major donors, um, sponsors or partners, um, and then um, collectives. So this could be maybe it's if you have alumni related to your organization, maybe it's um, those individuals. Maybe it's you have volunteers that um, want to participate in Giving Tuesday and they're willing to come together and each provide, you know, I don't know, $10. Or maybe it's some of your, not major donors, but mid-donors that want to come together and provide a collective match. So, Again, some of those people that we've talked about, the board members, major donors, um, and uh, sponsors, and collectives. Um, so when you're thinking about who to reach out to, there are really three phases in terms of it. So one, the first one is prospecting. So who are the people that are best to reach out to? So we'll talk about this in a second, but you want to make a list of those individuals, those groups um, that you think would be most effective to reach out to. Um, you want to think about people who have a strong connection with your nonprofit, have a strong giving history, or again, they are, um, they have another connection such as being a board member. Um, 
outreach. Um, so starting the conversation, um, using any cultivation methods that you've used. So knowing exactly the best way to reach out to them, personal one-on-one -on -one outreach, whether that's email or phone and starting that conversation out and then making the ask. So letting them know what exactly are matching grants and why it would be really impactful like, for your nonprofit. So let's dive a little bit more into each one. So when you're thinking about uh, the prospecting of factors to consider um, the affinity to your organization, how are they connected to your organization, but also maybe how are they connected to your cause? So again, this can go to corporate sponsors or local companies. How are they connected to your cause? Is there some sort of connection? Maybe it's just that you're in the same community. Maybe they're a local business that's held adoption events uh, for your organization. Um, do they have a history of giving to your nonprofit or organizations like yours? Again, a major donor um, that you've previously had. And do they have the capacity to give at a major level um, and or higher level? And again, this can vary nonprofit to nonprofit. For some, a higher level is thousand dollars, five hundred dollars. For others, it's going to be fifty thousand um, dollars. But what is a higher level for your organization and the average donation size that you've received in the past? Um, so. I would say look first within, as we talked about, your board members. Um, maybe they they've they have made a commitment to the financial well-being of your nonprofit. So they kind of make a perfect fit in terms of coming together and providing a match. Uh, major gift donors, they have already shown an interest and have invested in your cause. And so they're more likely to um, make another donation for your organization, especially if you have shared the impact that they've made. And sponsors uh, are people, if there are sponsors or companies that you have worked with before, again, they understand your cause, they understand your impact. So those are really great people to reach out to in terms of that. So um, you want to make a list, use a spreadsheet or, um, you know, a CRM tool and track your prospects and log your conversations uh, with them. Um, you know, who is going to be most willing to provide a uh, matching grant? So this can be a little homework assignment is just thinking of, you know, the first like three people you can think of, of who you could potentially reach out to. I think it's helpful to delegate this task if possible. I know we have a lot of people that are really um, one man or one woman teams, um, but if you have other people in your organization or volunteers, and there are a couple of people that you want to reach out to, maybe you delegate, uh, delegate um, someone making some of those calls or um, helping do some of the email outreach. And I also think this is where I think the keeping up with your donor engagement or cultivation throughout the year is keeping notes about your prospects. Um, so you don't lose track of important information of, you know, what programs they're interested in, what is the best way to contact them? Um, you know, what, uh, what donations have they made to the past of your organization? And when we're talking about outreach, uh, that's something that's good to consider is every prospect is different, right? The way that you're going to talk to major donors is going to be different than the way you talk to potential sponsors. Um, so you want to be flexible in terms of the conversations that you have. Maybe for a sponsor, it is you're going in person and having that conversation um, with a major donor. Maybe that's just a call or email. And of course, in terms of outreach, you have to just make the ask. And we'll talk about how you make the ask. Um, so when you're making the ask, you want it to be informed. So use information that you've used throughout that cultivation experience. As I said, what programs are they interested in? How are they connected to your organization? Those are things that are going to be really helpful when you're communicating the ask and sharing the impact that their donation could make. You know, if you've noticed that they've designated in the past their funds to a specific program, maybe you pitch that your their match will go to that program and that this past year they've done X amount with their donation. And this year we're looking to do this much and a match would really help go towards that. So that's where you're playing to their interest in terms of for your nonprofit. 
And also, you know, being willing to be flexible in terms of what they're interested in offering, their amounts, or, you know, if they do want it to go to a specific program or designation. Um, so just a couple of other tips in terms of when you're making your ask. Um, I think it's helpful to also break down exactly what matching grants are. Some people don't know what they are. Um, I know in the nonprofit space, I mean, people are new to non nonprofits or unfamiliar. They don't know, but definitely people who are in the non nonprofit space, they might not know exactly what a match is and also how impactful it can be, right? We've talked a lot about of how it incentivizes people to give. And they might, they might not know that. Um, you also want to be prepared, right? So do your homework in terms of your own nonprofit, right? What is data that you can share about your nonprofit's work? How much you've been able to accomplish with previous donations? What are your, you know, metric goals for next year? What are you looking to accomplish? Again, all of that information is going to um, have people feel, you know, really more empowered to give, but also, uh, you know, feel that their donation is going to go a long way. Um, I think also for some people, having an executive director, or major gifts officer can obviously lend weight in terms of the ask if you're really asking, again, a major donor. Um, we also have a couple of matching grant email templates of different emails that you can use um, to reach out to donors. And I'll share one of them right here. So this is an example of an email that you could send out to a major donor. So dear donor name, our organization is gearing up for Giving Tuesday and we need your help to maximize our impact. We're seeking a matching grant to amplify your campaigns, our campaign's impact. Your support and pledge to match contributions would potentially double our funds raise and inspire more giving. Um, as one of our most dedicated donors, you understand the importance of our work. This opportunity would boost our ability to you could share your impact statements, serve more families in need, provide more diapers, etc. I love to discuss how your matching gift could help us achieve our Giving Tuesday goals. I'll follow up with uh, you soon to explore this opportunity. Thank you for your continued support. So this is just one example of an email. Again, short and sweet, really, again, sharing that this could inspire more givings. This could double the impact. And this would be able to boost, again, what program or initiative you think this grantor would be most inspired by. All right, before I get into this, let me take a pause and just see some questions because I know some questions have come through. Um. Okay. Um. Do you indicate mighty cause that is either dollar for dollar or meet the threshold style? Um, we'll talk about that in a second in terms of creating matches, but you'll see there are a couple of different, even within thresholds, match styles, there's different ways. And for dollar for dollar, it can also be a per percentage match. So um, not matching 100%, but maybe matching 200%. Um, does your $5 gift really make a $10 difference if the matching $5 is donated anyway? Um, so again, I mean, that's the whole point of a match is that it's that you're, you're having a grantor. The reason why a grantor is deciding to, they're not just writing you a check for a thousand dollars, right? They're agreeing to be a grantor. They're agreeing that their donation is not just a check, but that it's matching funds. So it's not just, oh, I, we're just getting a, a check. No, it, this is a match check for our organization with the intention that this $1,000 is to match gifts that come in and that we're using that to incentivize people to give. Huh? Um, where do we find our to-do list? Uh, to-do list is on your organization page. So if you're logged in as an administrator, uh, so you just have to make sure you're logged in as an administrator on your org page. It'll be on your uh, dashboard. Um, and a copy of this webinar will be provided in follow-up email. Um, is a match for a certain number of donors more effective than a one-to-one -one match? So again, it kind of depends on what your goals are. Um, I would say one-to-one -one match is obviously, it, you're going to see that the most commonly, um, like truth be told. But a certain number of donate donors 
can be really impactful if you are trying to push for donor acquisition um, to receive more unique donors to give. Um, because again, it can be a communication tactic of we just need three more donors, right? Regardless maybe of the size, it doesn't we don't care how much you give. We want to get more donors to give. And again, that's a way to increase engagement maybe with past donors. But again, your goal is to acquire more donors, to have someone at least make a $5 donation. Um, so that is a, a definitely a way to, um, uh, that is a really great matching grant strategy. So it just depends on what your exact goals are and, and your the communication that you want to have. Um, yes. And the download link for the matching grant email templates will send and also include it in the email afterwards. Um, and I'll also the link will be in the slide deck. Um, ink. OK, what examples of increase the average size of donation style match can you share? That's a really great question. So one of the ways that you can do that is set a donation minimum for the match. Um, so let's say, you know, you want, you really want to increase your donation, your average donation size, I'm going to say $50, right? You could say that donors who give um, over $50 or more, their donation is going to be doubled. So that's a great way to um, utilize a matching grant to increase your average size of donation. Um Okay. Um, all right. And another question, what does the 84% stat come from? Um, I don't have it in front of me that that slide, but I believe it came from a classy report a couple of years ago. Um, okay. If we create a Giving Tuesday fundraising page on Mighty Cost platform, how do we get it to our donor audience? Do we send it via constant contact, a link on social media page and website? Yeah. So there's a couple of different ways. So one is it, it's a unique link. So it would be like sending your donors to your website to make a donation, right? So you would send them to your fundraising page on Mighty Cause. On your website, we have an embeddable widget. Um, you can obviously hyperlink, but you can also add the widget to your website temporarily for Giving Tuesday. Um, and when donors come to your site, they could easily make a donation to your Giving Tuesday campaign that way as well. Yes, and I will, as I mentioned, I will increase uh, or I will share this slide deck uh, in a follow-up email afterwards. Um, all right, so I will. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what are the next steps of if you get a yes. So let's say you pitched a matching grant and matching um, a major donor or your board or a sponsor says yes. So obviously you want to thank them and you want to hammer out those details, right? So how much will the match be? Um, are they in agreement with how you want to um, your match strategy? So maybe you do want to do it based off number of donors. Um, maybe you are going to plan just do dollar for dollar um, as well as what are going, how is the fulfillment going to happen? Are they going to make a donation via check? Are they going to make it online through your Mighty Cause fundraising page? How are they planning on doing that? I think especially the fulfillment part is really essential um, because sometimes that can be lost in the details. It's like, oh, great, you know, we'll have a match. Great. Well, how are you actually going to plan on fulfilling that match? Um. And as well, um, recognition. So that's also a big part of it. Does the person or the people want to be anonymous, which is, you know, perfectly fine. And we have a tool on, uh, on our platform that allows for that. Or do they want their name to be recognized? If they're a business, do they want their logo added to the match? Do they want it publicized, um, et cetera? So um, hammering out those details is really helpful before your match. Um, all right, so let's say they say no, maybe not at this time. I think the biggest thing to take away is that it is maybe not a no forever. Um, it could be a possibility in the future. So by doing that outreach, it's really a, a cultivation process or research in terms of 
who are the best people to reach out to? Or is this person, you know, we want to, they're interested, but it's not really the right time for them financially. Um, so this is your opportunity to build a relationship with that person, maybe keep them engaged with the work you're doing, the impact you're making. So that maybe next year when they're financially uh, um, able to, um, or where they feel more comfortable, that they're more willing to um, provide that match. And overall, you want to keep cultivating and engaging. So for your grantor, you want to make it a fulfilling experience. Um, so letting them know like that when the match has been met, you know, that exclamation marks, we've met our match, like we're able to raise $3,000 because of the match you provided. Um, how are you going to touch base with them, right? What are you going to send them in terms of reporting or information? Um, and again, engaging with them in terms of their impact, right? I think always I sharing that even in a follow-up of if the goal was we want to raise $3,000 so that we can purchase a thousand backpacks or continue this program for the next year, following up with that grantor in the following year and saying, Hey, because of your grant, we were able to continue our program this year. We saw more student, um, uh, so more student signs up and sign have signed up for our program. We've been able to purchase this many backpacks. And those individuals, again, are more likely to stay engaged with your nonprofit because they're continuously seeing the impact that their donation is making. Um, we've kind of said this before in our webinars, but most donors, right, when they are looking at the gifts that they're making, they see nonprofits as really a vehicle for the impact, right? Yes, you guys are doing all the work, but donors see that they're doing the work, but providing, they're seeing it as an investment. So sharing what they've received in return for their investment is really important. All right. So let's talk about creating a match. So this will jump more into creating a match on the platform and all the different types of matches that are available and how to set those up, et cetera. So when you're creating a match on our platform, um, where you want to go is on your organization dashboard when you're logged in as an admin. Um, you want to go to fundraising tools and then there will be a matching grants area and you just simply click create and you can create a new match. Um, so there are different things that you'll you can or will need to fill out in terms of your match. So um, one is, oh, let me go back. Um, so that includes your like if you want to add a logo, um, if you, what date and time you want it to start and end, um, and as well, what type of match it is. So the first type of match we'll talk about is a percentage a match. So match a percentage of each donation. Um, as we've talked about, 100% is usually the most common. That is dollar for dollar, right? $5, $10. Um, but we've also seen people use different percentages. So for some, it's 50% um, if for each donation, 50% of that donation is met. For others, it's even more. It's 300% per donation. So um, a donation makes an even bigger impact. Um the next is a cumulative threshold match, as we've talked about. So that's divided up into three different matches. So the first one being applying the total match when total dollars raised equals the match value. So meaning you only get the match if you raise that amount. So you have to raise $500 in this example in order to unlock the match. So you think about it like a Kickstarter campaign. If you're familiar with Kickstarter, the Kickstarter was you have to raise that amount to get the money. And if you didn't raise that money, if you didn't reach that goal, even if you were close, you didn't get it. So that is how this match functions. Um, the you know the benefit or one way of the reason why you utilizing it is again it kind of creates urgency in terms of we need this match to be completed or met for us to even get it. So it's not just if you make a donation, your donations automatically matched, like a dollar for dollar is 
we need to all work together to reach this goal for us to even get it. All right, apply total match when a certain quantity of donations is received. So if this allows for you know one donor, they can donate twice for a match and that's counted as two donations. It's just looking at donations. So again, this is where we talk about the strategy of donor engagement. If you are really trying to push for your donors to just be engaged with your organization's Giving Tuesday campaign, you could have it where we just need 25 donations. So even if you made a $5 donation earlier today, if you make it again today, that's going to help us reach our $5,000 um, challenge match. Okay, apply total match when a certain number of unique donors is reached. So that means if one donate donor donates twice during the match, it's only going to be counted once. Um, so it's really great for organizations that, uh, or if you're looking to have a certain amount of donors make a donation. So as you see here, 50 donors needed to get the $1,000 um, challenge. And again, this could be a great strategy if you're looking for donor acquisition. When you're also creating your match on the platform, there are a couple of match conditions that you will see um, that you can choose from. So this is how it will automatically be set, but you can change these if, if you want. And I'll just explain what each means because um, as you're setting it up, you might be, what does this mean exactly? Um, set a minimum per donation amount before a match is applied. So this was the example, if we want to increase the average donation size, maybe you want to see say that donors have to donate $10 or more for their donation to be matched. Include offline donations in the match. If you have checks or cash coming in and you want to count those towards the match, um, you can add those to the platform. If you have that enabled, those gifts will count towards the match. Include organization fundraisers in the match. So if you have different fundraisers going on, maybe you have a dedicated page for a specific program or different programs you have, or you're having peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, if you add a match on your organization page, it'll count towards any fundraiser that you have going on. And apply match once per donor. Um, that means that if you want to set it so that uh, if a donor donates, if they donate again, it will not count. Again, kind of spreading out the match for more, um, more than one person, if you think that will be an issue for your organization. And then you'll notice at the end an email section. Um, so that the intention of that is to add the email of the grantor. Once the grantor, once the grant is fulfilled, or I should say not fulfilled, met or completed, an email will be sent out to that email address, letting the grantor know that it's been completed and they can go fulfill their donation. You can add your email address here or some nonprofits do that because they would just prefer to receive the email and then they can make communication with the grantor. That's totally up to you. All right. Um, so another uh, kind of tool or something you'll see when you're creating a match is something called include match value and page metrics. And I wanted to go through, go through this because we have always questions about this specific tool and what does it exactly mean? Um, so the include match value and page metrics means that Let's say you do have a dollar for dollar match. So you have $5 donation. It means $10, right? So it means that the metrics on your page, your total, it will automatically jump by that amount so that donors can see that immediately. So if they make a $10 gift, your metrics will jump by $10. So they'll see that. Um, if your grantor plans to fulfill their match online, I would recommend to either disable this option from the get-go or disable it maybe towards the end of your match. And that the reason for that is because your metrics are automatically adding the match. So if your grantor is then going online and making their gift, it's going to double your amount. So it kind of gets confusing. So I would recommend either disabling this option or just turning it off once you're at the end of your match um, or um, you can always also do that retroactively. If when after your match closes, you can disable that and then your grantor can make their gift. Um, 
And as well, one thing to know is only online donations will count towards any leaderboards or prizes for um, our Giving Tuesday event. Um, all right, when you go and also make your match, you will also have to enter when you want it to start and end. This is also really important because this is when donors will see it on your page, but also when the match will actually start counting donations. One thing to really know is on our platform, the match tool, when you create a match, matches are independent from any other matches that you make. So if you have multiple matches, you have to be cognizant of when you set when they start and end. If you set two different matches to start at the same time and they have the same conditions, they're going to count the same donations because they're going to calculate donations based off the information provided. They're not going to look at, well, this donation is being counted by this match. No, it's going to say, hey, at this start day and time, based off this amount, the, this information, we're counting these donations. So that's just something to be aware of when you're setting your match. If you do have more than one match, you probably are interested in setting up queued matches. Um, so when you create your first match, so we start our match, let's say we want our match to start fundraising um, today and then it ends tomorrow. Uh, let's say after that uh, match, we wanna say whenever it ends, we want the next one to start. So if it ends now, it's going, the next one is immediately going to start. Um, so you can set up that up on the platform. So you'll set up your first match when you want it to start and end. And then when you set your second match, you can set it up um, when you want it to be queued after. Um, all right. And then as well, um, the match fulfillment link. It's a little cut off here, but um, one thing as well, kind of the benefit of adding the grantor's email address in that email section is that a fulfillment link is sent out to the grantor. So if they are planning on making their gift online, um, they have the link there and they can make their gift and it will count, have it look like the grant was fulfilled on our platform. Um, you can always also access this fulfillment link in your dashboard if you go to your past matches you can also access it there and send the link over to the grantor okay i know we have uh just a couple of time left so i will kind of breeze through these really quickly so we can get on to some strategy or marketing and promotion um does the matching grant have to be processed online no it doesn't um it can be processed however you want it to process, but only online donations count towards any leaderboards or prizes. As well, matches do not get uh, counted on any leaderboards. So it's just online donations. So that's one incentive for grantors to make their gift online. Um, uh, when you're, oops, let me just go. Um, is that, uh... okay, yes, okay. So when your grant uh, display, so when your grant is live, your matching grant is live, it will appear on your um, organization page. It'll say the match is live and they can click that. Um, they can donate and it'll automatically get counted. Um, but there's also a match tile that will show the match, show if you have a sponsor, a logo, an image, etc. and show those conditions. Um, as well, on our search, or uh, donors can search if what organizations or fundraisers have matches going on as well. All right, so quickly just promoting your match. Um, so when we're talking about when you do have a match, obviously it's really important to communicate that match to your donors. So you want to make sure that you're including that in email communication, you're including that on social media, and also including it on your website, because that could be a natural place that people can go to. So um, here is an example of a way to promote your match in an email. So uh, there are insert days or hours uh, until our fundraising deadline left to make a gift to our organization. 
and a generous donor supporter has offered to double uh, your donation if you make your gift on Giving Tuesday, December 3rd. There's never been a better time to support our organization. Your gift will help us insert your impact in the year ahead. Um, if you give to our organization name because you care and because you want to see your hard-earned money do more for your cause by doubling your donation. The clock is ticking. Make your gift before our midnight fundraising deadline on Giving Tuesday to have your gift match. So a way to um, send out that communication. Also, I think having a strong language and also strong imagery, um, this is some example of social media posts. So again, your donation doubled today only. Double your donation, matching grant opportunity through Friday. Very clear, very specific when they need to donate. And again, really strengthening making that donation. Last chance, make two times the impact for Oceans this Giving Tuesday. Time is running out to participate in the big, uh, biggest day to give back to the oceans. Donate to Oceana today and take a stand against harmful plastic pollution, et cetera. All gifts before midnight will be matched by her partner. Super strong, super clear, exactly what they're asking, making it clear that donations will be matched. All right, and last slide, and we'll talk questions. I know we're over, but uh, this webinar will we'll send over everything in a follow-up email. Um, so uh, there's also traditional collateral that organizations will use. So um, signs, flyers, um, postcards as well. This is an example of um, a postcard of when matching about um, promoting matching grant, getting your whole team involved of pushing the match on their social networks or on LinkedIn and anywhere you promote your campaign, right? So if that's at um, a local events that you have or again, online on your social media posts, um, those are great places to promote that. All right, so our next webinars um, are going to be your ultimate communications guide to Giving Tuesday. We're gonna be talking more about email marketing, social media posts, strategies for that. Um, and then also, as we get closer to Giving Tuesday, some last minute tips that you can implement for Giving Tuesday um, if you are starting your campaign late. So I will go through some of these questions quickly. All right. Um, what is the benefit of creating the match on your platform rather than on our website? Um, so if you're participating in our Giving Tuesday campaign, um, that is one benefit is because, or in our Giving Tuesday event, because of kind of all I've listed in the beginning of the different things we offer, the tools you'll have available and um, your the prizes as well that we'll have available for Giving Tuesday. But as well, we have a pretty comprehensive matching grants tool that will automatically calculate all of that stuff. You can download a report on your matching grants so you can see exactly all of the donors that are associated with that specific match. Having talked to our engineers, they it's a pretty complicated tool on the back end, so they've put a lot of effort into it. Um, so it's a pretty comprehensive tool and allows for a lot of different um, you know, calculations or allows for different types of matches that you want to do. Does this mean for the matches to count on Giving Tuesday, the donor has to donate online immediately via? So if you want the matched gift to count towards leaderboards or prizes, it would have to be made online. It doesn't mean that it doesn't count towards your Giving Tuesday campaign. It's still going to be on your metrics. You can still, you know, share how much, include that in your totals when you share with um, donors or, you know, supporters. It's just for our specific event for any leaderboards or prizes, we only count online donations. So if you receive a check um, or that match is made via check, it's just not going to be counted towards our leaderboards and prizes. Um, all right. Um, let's go back to the chat. Um, is there a resource we have access to when we register for your free? Yes, uh, we have a whole toolkit. The resources you don't have to purchase, it will be available to you um, when you register. Um, and yeah, that toolkit you will have access to with all of our templates and articles um, about Giving Tuesday. 
Um, is there a chat link or email address if we have questions about developing our Mighty Cause Giving Tuesday Funders campaign? Yes. So let me just add the, our email here. So support at mightycause.com. Um, we have real people on answering questions on there. Um, so if you need any help, like that's what we're here for. We want to make sure that you guys are the most successful that you can be for your organization. So just reach out to us. We're more than happy to help. And um, do you have a sample contact to share with a matching grantor regarding terms and conditions? Um, I don't have that template um, here. Uh, I mean, that's a good idea. Um, I, yes, I haven't seen that before either, but I can look and see what other, I can try to look at what other organizations have done. I don't think I've seen other organizations where it's been a, a contract that they've signed. Um, but I think it's been more of like email communication, but I'll try to see if there's anything that I can find from other nonprofits who have been successful with it. Um, how do you work with Facebook? If someone prefers to donate through Facebook, does this amount count toward in any way towards the challenge match goal? So that would be considered an offline donation because it's not processed through us. It's processed elsewhere. So just like if you received a check or cash, right, you're processing all that elsewhere. Um, so you can add that to the page. You can have it counted towards the match. As I mentioned, for leaderboards and prizes, it's not going to count, but that you can definitely account that for your campaign on Mighty Cause, account that for your totals, have that count towards your match. It So you can definitely include that. It's just, you know, obviously process elsewhere. So it's offline. For startups, do you recommend for how you we research potential match donors? Um, so, yeah, I think kind of what we talked about. So there's a couple of different ways and that really depends on your organization. You want to think about your local community. Is there an organization in your community that you you think would be willing to um, offer a match? And again, you can start off small. If this is your first year, you can make a match of $500, right? What is large, what is large and small for or for how much you raise and your match is up to you and your nonprofit. And again, a lot of, or a lot of, especially local companies or local businesses, they are looking to, you know, create that philanthropic initiative for them. They want to publicize that they're doing something for their community and impact. So that's definitely one potential way of how you do research. Um, If there's any kind of, like I said, if there's a local company or business that, um, also has some sort of connection with your organization. Maybe if you're an animal rescue, it is a pet store or, you know, I don't know, a local business that uh, you has helped, you know, hosted you for events, et cetera. Really just depends. And then if you're brand new as well, I would say, who are the people that maybe in this situation you might need to um, have so that could be your board. If you're able to each donate $25, so you receive $500. That could be one, and that could be friends or family as well. Um, I have two grantors, each $1,000. If I queue them and we never reach the first 1K, it feels like the second grant donor doesn't get recognized. Is it better to make them both active at the same time? So that is dependent on what you think you can do for your campaign. And I think that's a good question. I think that do you do you really think that you will not be able to meet that thousand dollar goal? Um, I would say just one thing to note, if you do do them at the same time, which is perfectly fine, it just means that the same, donation is going to be matched twice. And again, some people choose to do that, but some people accidentally do that on the platform and they don't realize that they're doing that. So if you are putting the match at the same time, the same donation is going to count towards both. Um, which again, is fine because if you don't think that it, it's going to be really hard for you to reach a thousand dollars, maybe that you do do that because you're encouraging, hey, we have two matches going on at the same time, or and your donation can be 
tripled or um, et cetera. So I think it depends on, you know, thinking about how difficult is that thousand dollars for you to gain? Um, I noticed there's a payment method under profile for donations. How about a payment method for fundraisers? So fundraisers also have a donate button and it's the same checkout system. In other words, our payment method for payment method for receiving donations from donors. Yeah, it's the same payment method. It's just on a different page. Is Mighty Cause just the platform or does registering for giving day for giving Tuesday expose our nonprofit to a giving network via Mighty Cause? So we are the technology provider. Our Giving Tuesday event um, is kind of a collective event to encourage giving. Um, that's where we provide nonprofits who are not our, you know, who are not on our platform even access to a lot of our tools and resources um, and as well opportunity to win prizes. Um, uh, so to register, I just see some um, questions about registering. To register, you want to go to givingtuesday.mightycost.com. You'll see a big register button. You'll have to create a login if you've never logged in before or you've never signed up before. Um, then there will be a form. You'll fill out the form. Again, this is if you're brand new, have never been on Mighty Cause. Um, once you complete the form, there will be a request sent to our team that you want to be an administrator for your nonprofit. One thing we do at Mighty Cause is that... Um, we vet and make sure that anyone who um, is requesting to uh, affiliate themselves with an organization or a platform, that they're the actual person. So they'll look at your request. Um, if they can verify your information and that you, in fact, do are, you know, uh, an admin for your nonprofit, they will approve you. If they have any questions, they'll send you an email and say, hey, can we have some information so you can verify your connection to this nonprofit? Once you get approved, you can do the to-do list, which is really just, again, it's kind of three steps. It's really simple. You can all finish it in like a couple, five minutes. Um, so it sounds like there's a lot of steps, but really it's, it's a process that doesn't take that much time in total. Um, and I can send the link in the chat right now to where you can register. And as I mentioned, it is completely free to register. Okay. Um, uh, just, and one last question, just be clear. If a donor makes a donation via a regular Mighty Cause page on Giving Tuesday, will it count towards leaderboards or must be through a specific Giving Tuesday link? That's a really good question. So just on your giving Tuesday dot mighty cause link. So you just want to make sure that um you're using giving Tuesday dot mighty cause dot com. Um and that's it. It'll just count towards it. If there's any issue if a donor makes a donor a donation on a link that says mighty cause dot com and not giving Tuesday dot mighty cause dot com, just email us and we'll we'll fix it. But um as long as just the your giving Tuesday participation link, um it will automatically count. All right. I know we've gone over quite a bit, so I really appreciate everyone sticking around. I hope this was helpful in talking about matching grants. Of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We want to make sure that we're here to help, you know, facilitate a great Giving Tuesday for everyone. And uh, thank you so much again. I really appreciate it.